So what I'm actually doing in this video is actually photographing butterflies. It's early in the morning and I'm using the OM1 and the 60mm macro lens. And I've got the camera set up for focus stacking but I'm doing it handheld. Normally speaking, if I was focus stacking I'd probably prefer to put it on a tripod because then you know everything's in exact register. But providing that you can get a fast enough shutter speed, I'm using 400th of a second this morning. I'm taking eight shots and I'm getting some very, very good results. Now, because it's early in the morning, it's about half past six, I can get very close to them. There's, today is forecast to be well into the high 70s later on. In those conditions, I aren't gonna get close enough to the butterflies, but at the moment, I mean, I can actually sort of get within an inch or two of them. You probably can't see the butterfly very well, but it's just sitting there quite happily on the end of that plant. So using the OM-1, and I've got the camera set up for focus stacking, and I'm gonna frame it up, get it in focus, leaving enough space around the subject so I don't actually get anything cut off or anything like that. You'll see there's a black line around it when you use focus stacking. That's how you frame it up. So I'm using 500th of a second. Now it took eight shots very, very quickly and the green line coming across where it says busy is where it's actually stacking all the pictures together. So then I press the review button and I've got a shot there that's pin sharp, even at 2.8, both antenna sharp, both wings sharp. If I go to here, you can see all the different pictures that actually in the stack. Because it's early in the morning and they're fairly stationary, that allows me to get literally within a few inches of them. I'm probably about 10 inches away there. Now at the moment it's moving a bit, so what I have to do is just wait for it to actually be perfectly still before I press the button. There's no point in pressing, doing focus stacking if there's any subject movement, but now it's perfectly still and press the shut button. Yeah, that looks quite nice. So I found another heath fritillary um, and it's on this bit of grass. The problem was that the grass was quite long and although there's not an awful lot of wind about today, it was swaying about a little bit. So what I've did, I'm using what's called a Wembley plamp. Basically it's this spike you put in the, in the ground a clamp that you, you put on the spike and at the top of it there, there's this adjustable jaw and it will hold bits of grass, bits of vegetation and that sort of thing there. So what I've actually done is snip the bit of grass off from over there, transported it here and clamped it in this, this bit of grass. And the butterfly is sitting there as happy as it can be. So what I'll do then is because now there's no wind movement, um, because it's only on a short bit of grass, so it's not swaying about. I can then use the 60mm macro lens, get in there and photograph it quite happily. So here you can see I've framed the, the Heath Fridilli up, press the shut button. So here I've found another Heath Fridilli butterfly. This time I'm not photographing it sideways on, I'm photographing it head on. So I'll be photographing head first with the antenna up. That means I'm going to need a lot more depth of field. So I've changed the differential on the focus stacking. I've also increased the number of shots to 12. And I've stopped it down to 5.6 because that's going to enable me to get the depth of field because now I'm not photographing something that's fairly flat on. I'm photographing something with a lot of depth in the picture. 
So hopefully, now this time I'm focusing manually rather than just using the autofocus because I want to be very, very precise with my focusing. That doesn't look bad at all. I was quite pleased with that, considering it's handheld, it's not bad. So when I first found it, it actually, it's got its wings folded up flat, parallel with the length of the body, but earlier on it actually got its wings out flat. So I'm just gonna wait and see if it does it again. My patience paid off because the butterfly did open its wings again. Shooting from a lower viewpoint, I managed to get this shot. When focusing a butterfly head on, you will need a lot more depth of field than if photographing it from sideways on. So for this shot, I was using a differential of 6 to enable a wider distance between the focusing points in the stack. So I'm going to finish up with a few more images of butterflies, flowers and other insects. All are taken using handheld focus stacking. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, ideally, focus stacking is best done on a tripod. Then you are certain to have everything in exact register. However, there are days and conditions when using a tripod is completely out of the question. If it's hot, it can be very difficult to get a tripod close enough to the subject. Also, you are more likely to disturb the vegetation with the legs of the tripod and this can easily spook the butterfly. Focus stacking only works providing the subject does not move throughout the exposure. Focus stacking for flowers can be successful as this shot of two pyramidal orchids demonstrates. Fortunately on this occasion there was very little wind movement and this helps to ensure that there is no subject movement between the eight shots. Stacking helped to diffuse what was otherwise a very cluttered background. So providing that you can use a fast enough shutter speed and there is no subject movement, handheld focus stacking can work well. For handheld stacking it's probably best not to have too many images in the stack. I usually aim for eight shots in the stack but if more depth of field is needed I will go to 12 or even 15 shots. The more shots in the stack, the more risk of camera movement when hand holding. The slower shutter speed that I would comfortably hand hold for focus stacking is 400th of a second, although ideally I would prefer 500th of a second or higher. The faster the shutter speed, the less chance of movement between the frames when hand holding. So what is the big advantage of using focus stacking as opposed to photographing a subject using a single shot? To demonstrate this, I'm going to show a couple of shots of a silver Y moth. Whilst it's not a prize winning image, it will demonstrate how using focus stacking can improve an image and produce a more pleasing result. To get sufficient definition on a subject using a single shot, you will need to use a small aperture to obtain sufficient sharpness. For this image, I used f7.1. The moth has a good definition, but because the moth is quite close to the background, at f7.1 it's difficult to get any separation between the subject and the messy background. By shooting at the widest aperture of f2.8, there is limited depth of field so that makes the background more diffused. However, shooting at a single image at f2.8 would not give enough definition on the moth. So using focus stacking and shooting 8 shots at a differential of 4 will give enough sharpness on the subject, but will still allow you to achieve a cleaner out of focus background. On this side by side shot you can see that the background on the left hand shots shot at f7.1 is quite messy, whereas the background on the picture on the right shot at f2.8 and focus stacked 
the background is a lot softer and more diffused. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to be notified of future uploads. Thanks for watching.